My name is Teddy and my mom is Brooke Learmy. I love my mom and she is a great mom for me and my sister. She works really hard. Tonight she has some exciting news. Thanks for watching. Here you go. Ready? Great. Let's go to the playground. Maryland has never seen a year like this before. None of us has. Every day, it's just a constant negotiation of how do we make today work. This year, we've all faced new and unexpected challenges day in and day out. Putting food on the table, paying rent, connecting to the internet, keeping a small business afloat. Many people are worried about their loved ones in assisted living facilities. When are we gonna be able to see them again? Are they safe? And for Marylanders who are already struggling, 2020 has been nearly impossible. My name is Brooke Lehrman. I'm a mom of two, a civil rights attorney, and a state delegate representing Maryland's 46th district in Baltimore City. She's the kind of neighbor that will always bring people together. Brooke is like a little popcorn. She'd be popping up everywhere. <laughs> She was working alongside the community association because of a problematic bar that was the source of a lot of violence. And not only was she there helping us as our lawyer to get that shut down and to improve the neighborhood in that way, but she stayed engaged in the community over the long term to the point that she helped set up a new community arts center with the Creative Alliance. And so she's somebody that sees communities all the way through their transformation. Brooke measures Maryland's success on how successful Maryland families are. We must be working together to unlock the potential of every family, community, and business here in Maryland. We need people in political leadership who genuinely care about people. I think she does. I know she does. Jose Andres and his charity, World Central Kitchen, here in Baltimore today. Him and his charity are giving away 20,000 meals per week, first contacted by state delegate Brooke Learman. It's wonderful to hear from Brooke and then figure out how we could engage. Every week, more people are showing up at community food pantries and at our schools in need of additional food. I think that she is a champion for those who are underserved. Now I'm running for comptroller to work on behalf of families, communities, and businesses in every corner of the state. Strong local businesses create thriving communities and more financially resilient families. She's a visionary. She's got a vision for our community, for our businesses. We can fight poverty, build safe, strong, and connected communities, and create more wealth for more Maryland families. Brooke Lehrman is kind and compassionate. She's tough and energetic. She looks for solutions. She looks for ways to elevate voices. I'm Brooke. I'm looking forward to getting to know you, your family, and your community. I would love to see her serve the entire state of Maryland. I'm excited to work with you to build a better Maryland. Please welcome Karima Bot Handley, Levita Gardner, and Nancy Andrew. As you can see, Brooke is an incredibly hard worker and leader. My name is Garima Bot Handley. I'm a leader in Baltimore education and co led the Howard County chapter of Maryland Women for Biden Harris this year. These ladies and I were so proud to work with Brooke over the last six months as she co founded and co led. Maryland Women for Biden Harris. Brooke is an inspiring leader and I learned so much from her this year. Under her leadership, working with her and the other chairs and chapter leads, we made thousands of phone calls and wrote thousands of letters and postcards to Pennsylvania voters, helping us to successfully flip Pennsylvania in the 2020 election. I'm Nancy Andrew from Easton in rural Talbot County and thanks to Brooke, her energy and her enthusiasm, I served as one of the co-chairs for Eastern Shore Women for Biden. Brooke is a great organizer. She doesn't leave anyone out. She made sure that every region of the state was included, gave us ways to be involved, connected us with other statewide leaders, and helped ensure that we were a diverse and inclusive group. I know that Brooke is going to run a 24 county campaign. She will be crisscrossing this great state of Maryland, listening to voters' concerns, hearing their good ideas, because that's who Brooke is. 
And Brooke makes the work fun. I am LaVita Gardner. I led communications for Maryland Women for Biden Harris. And as soon as I heard Brooke was running for state comptroller, I knew I wanted to support her. She's the kind of leader we need. We talk all day and night, her kids in the background, my kids in the background, but we were getting things done. She inspires people and she does not leave anyone out. We are all so proud to support Brooke. Please welcome Monica Guerrero Vasquez. Hi, I'm Monica Guerrero Vasquez. I'm the executive director of Centro Sol, the Center for Health and Opportunities for Latinos. As a first generation immigrant Latina in Baltimore City, I am very proud and I've been honored to collaborate with Brooke in the past several years. Brooke is a professional who's teaching us the importance of representation and compassion to support Latinos and other marginalized communities. She has always been available to advise and support the needs of our community, including during the pandemic. I am very happy that immigrant families around the state will have a champion like Brooke um, to look out for them as a controller. Soy Monica Guerrero Vasquez, soy directora del Centro Sol y como Latina y primera generación en los Estados Unidos, Baltimore ha sido mi hogar y ha sido un honor colaborar con Brooke en los últimos años. Brooke es es una mujer profesional que nos ha enseñado la importancia de representar y apoyar a las comunidades marginalizadas como los latinos. Ella está siempre disponible para asesorar y dar consejo y ha estado pendiente de las necesidades de la comunidad, incluso durante la pandemia. Estoy muy contenta de que las familias inmigrantes en el estado tendrán una voz como la de Brooke para representarlos como controller. Please welcome Senator Will Smith. Well, good evening, everyone. Hi, my name is Senator Will Smith. I'm from Montgomery County, and I'm glad to be here with all of you and support my friend, Brooke. It's a testament to her that this launch has been all about community voices. That's who she is, and it's what she's all about. Now, I've worked with Brooke in the legislature, and we share the same values. When she sees injustice, she doesn't just sit there, she acts. We had kindergartners in this state who were literally getting expelled from school, the overwhelming majority of whom were black and brown kids. Now, she took the leadership role in the House, and I did so in the Senate. And we work together as a team to end this terrible discriminatory practice, which is the first step in the school to prison pipeline. And then we went on to do the same kind of effort on the HOME Act, which is landmark legislation to expand access to safe, affordable housing for Maryland families. It took 23 years, but we got it done working with advocates and community members. The bottom line is that she cares about Maryland families and kids, and she brings about the change to make them safer, more prosperous and healthier. I'm proud to support her, and I know that she'll bring the same type of energy and grit to the Comptroller's office that I've watched her bring each and every day to her work in the legislature. So now, it's my honor to introduce the next Comptroller for the state of Maryland and my friend, Brooke Learman. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brooke Learman, and this evening I'm so excited to let you know that I'm running to be the next comptroller for the state of Maryland. I want to thank everybody who helped pull this event together, including Teddy, who made his Facebook Live debut, um, my amazing constituents in District 46 for giving me the chance to serve them for the past six years and the next two, and my family and all my friends for helping with this event tonight. First, I'll be honest, before I served in the House of Delegates, where I've represented Maryland's 46th district for the last six years, I don't think I really fully understood what the Maryland Comptroller does or the huge impact the office can have on the lives of Marylanders. The Comptroller is one of only three independently elected statewide offices in Maryland. The governor, of course, runs our agencies and sets the tone, and our amazing attorney general represents us in court. The Comptroller manages the state's money every dollar in and every dollar out. Along with the governor and state treasurer, the comptroller also serves on the Maryland Board of Public Works. And as I saw firsthand for five years as a member of the Appropriations Committee, we might allocate funding uh, for playgrounds or parks or schools, but at the end of the day, it was the Board of Public Works, the BPW, who'd ultimately decide whether or not the state would spend that money and who would fulfill those contracts. Finally, because our comptroller signs the checks for every dollar we spend, 
from tax refunds to small business loans to funding for schools and roads, the comptroller is uniquely positioned to see and understand the numbers that tell the story of how our state is really doing, which families, which businesses, which neighborhoods are struggling or thriving. And that story will soon include the big picture of the impact of COVID-19 on our businesses and our families. I'm telling you all of this because I want you to be as excited as I am about the huge potential of this office, the power we can harness and the resources we can use to get Maryland's economy moving and make our state a better place to live, work and do business than it's ever been before. This opportunity comes at a time when our current comptroller, Peter Francho, will be moving on from the office after four historic terms. It's time to build on the good and important work that he's done while meeting the moment with a bold new vision for the comptroller's office. That's why I'm running. As someone who grew up and is now raising my own kids in Maryland, you know, I'm a former, uh, I'm a former Maryland public school kid and I have memories of vacations in Western Maryland in the mountains and summer trips to the Eastern shore, had a great wedding in St. Mary's, but I've been so proud to represent District 46 for the past six years in the House of Delegates. This district, which I'm honored to represent uh, with delegates Luke Klippinger and Robin Lewis and Senate President Bill Ferguson, is as diverse as our state. It encompasses a busy waterfront for tourists and residents and a thriving nationally important port. It includes two stadiums, historic neighborhoods, communities that have been reborn with newly resettled immigrants from Latin America and formerly redlined neighborhoods that are now thriving because of important state investment but it's also an, a district where families are struggling. They're working multiple jobs to make ends meet, living in public housing that hasn't been updated since World War II, struggling to pay rent in overcrowded spaces and unable to afford a down payment on their own homes, sending their kids to schools that, where they have no heat, <laughs> waiting for buses that don't come. And all that was before 2020, before the pandemic, pandemic made it even clear that as they say, we might all be in the same storm, but we are not all in the same boat. Ensuring that we are all in sturdy boats is really why I ran for the House of Delegates in the first place, because I believe that as my former boss, the late great Senator Paul Wellstone used to say, we all do better when we all do better. When we all get the chance to reach our full potential, that's when we really thrive. And when I moved back to Maryland after law school, I saw that basic government functionings, functions weren't working for Maryland families. I tried to take the bus to work, and I didn't come. I was looking at schools for my son and none of the water fountains could be used because of lead in the pipes. And I was re representing community groups as a pro bono council who were trying to create safer neighborhoods, but the deck was, deck was continuously stacked against them. So I decided to do what I could to change things. And I ran to be a delegate, knocking on thousands of doors, hosting dozens and dozens of house parties and meeting amazing people who were trying to make their community stronger, safer, and build a better life for themselves and their kids. I knew then, and I know now, that we're all in this together. We all do better when we all do better means that Bethesda can never reach its full potential until Baltimore does. It means Cumberland communities will never be all they can be until Salisbury is booming. It means that St. Mary's and Bel Air, their futures are intertwined. I am dedicated to ensuring that our government does all it can to ensure that each and every family and community is reaching its full potential. As Dr. King used to say, we're, we, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And this is the belief that I've spent my years in the House of Delegates digging in and working in my district's communities, helping to start community development corporations in disinvested in communities, securing funding for libraries and playgrounds, arts and immigrants organizations. It's why I fought to make Maryland a leader in combating climate change, creating jobs and economic opportunity, tackling systemic inequities from education to housing to transportation. And this is why I've worked so hard throughout the pandemic to get families resources to get through this. From partnering with World Central Kitchen to distribute thousands of meals to working to bridge the digital divide for kids struggling to learn remotely without broadband at home. These are the things I've always fought for, to ensure our government is removing barriers and creating opportunities so that each and every Marylander and Maryland community can reach its full potential. And that's what I'll do if I'm honored to have the chance to serve as your next comptroller. As Maryland's comptroller, one, 
I'll work each and every day to help our communities and small businesses grow and thrive. What does that mean? Well, the comptroller's office as the tax collector and payer for the state is uniquely situated to be a champion on income-based issues for families, communities, and small businesses. Maryland is the, wealthy, the nation's wealthiest state, but many Marylanders were already struggling before COVID-19. In fact, 40% said they'd be financially devastated by one serious illness before the pandemic. That's unacceptable. As comptroller, I'll use every resource at my disposal to help families and communities struggling to build financial resilience. I'll prioritize policies to help us close the racial wealth gap that persists in this state and help individuals, families, and small business owners build financial resilience, offering key resources to the comptroller's existing regional offices around the state. We'll make those regional offices, all 12 of them around the state, centers for economic growth and innovation, working with partners like local nonprofits, faith-based groups, senior centers, and banks to offer resources like tax prep help for small businesses and families, financial literacy education, technical assistance, and housing counseling. We'll use the comptroller's office reach, well, to reach thousands of unbanked Marylanders and ensure that they begin down the path toward accumulating more financial resources. In addition, I want businesses to start here and stay here. And I will use the power of the comptroller's office to help make sure that happens. In Maryland, nearly 40% of our small businesses are minority owned. They're the heart of our economy. And in 2020, they've been hit especially hard. Minority owned businesses already face systemic and longstanding barriers to accessing startup capital and loans before the pandemic, while black entrepreneurs are turned down for loans at twice the rate as their white counterparts. This is why one of my key priorities as comptroller will be supporting a black and minority and women owned small businesses and ensuring that they have access to resources they need to succeed and thrive. In addition to providing regional on the ground technical assistance and support, we need to look at the availability of capital. Over the last decade, banks operating in Maryland have increased deposits while cutting back on small business loans. For example, Baltimore banks nearly doubled their deposits between 2007 and 2016, while drastically reducing small business lending. As comptroller, I'll work with banks and credit unions and CDFIs to increase loan to deposit ratios. We'll track and publish data on an annual basis, and we'll work through our local offices to connect prospective small business owners with opportunities for loans. We'll support programs to create capital access and use state dollars for loan loss programs. Two, the comptroller's office is also the hub of financial data in Maryland. And we can harness that data and use it to make it a proactive force for families, retirees, and businesses. I will work to modernize the way the state of Maryland conducts its business and harness the power of that data that's coming into the comptroller's office and put it to work in a new office of outcome analysis to help improve programs for busy working families, retirees, and small business owners. Every year, our federal, state, and tax laws change and new laws and regulations are added or deleted. As comptroller, I'll make sure that we have a private letter ruling process to provide guidance, transparency, and consistency for individual and business taxpayers. And of course, one of the comptroller's most important responsibilities is serving on the board of trustees of the Maryland State Retirement and Pension System. I've had uh, the opportunity over the past six years as a member of the Oversight Committee on Pensions, I've had an up close view of the challenges facing the system. In addition to ensuring that the pension is paying out timely and accurate benefits, I'll also call for Maryland to follow the lead of other states in divesting pension funds from fossil fuel companies that fail to come up with business plans that address climate change. That divestment will make our money safer and reflect our values. I will also continue my work to ensure we're not paying hefty investment management fees and that our investment managers reflect the diversity of our state. Three, finally, I'll always remember that every tax dollar the state spends comes from you. And that first and foremost, the comptroller's office must be responsive to you and your family and your business. As Maryland taxpayers, you deserve to know how your tax dollars are being spent and how they're working for you. Our business owners deserve to be paid accurately and on time. Our records should be an open book. And that's why I'll create a website, Open Book Maryland, where you can easily follow every dollar spent by the state. With the governor and the state treasurer, the comptroller also sits on the Board of Public Works, making the final decisions about not just what and how we're going to build, but who will do the actual building. 
And as someone who's worked with and advocated for small and minority owned businesses and advised them on contracts, I know our state's procurement process has a long way to go. But it's also one of the biggest opportunities we have to level the playing field for small businesses and to grow our economy. As comptroller, I'll work to refocus our bidding process on getting the best value for our money, not just the lowest price. And I'll advocate for smart infrastructure investments to secure our economic future, including in a new Maryland Communities of Opportunity Fund to revitalize communities with investments in mixed income homeownership, affordable housing, and community assets. I know as well as you do that the strong public education system is the cornerstone of a thriving and resilient community. I've served as education chair of the Baltimore City delegation and fought for funding in the classroom and for infrastructure. As comptroller, I will continue to support and advocate for those same needs, from improving public school infrastructure to restoring funding for HBCUs, and now to improving access to affordable high-speed internet. It's just critical to the economic future of our state and for public health, as the shift to working and learning remotely during the pandemic has made clear. Everyone must be connected. Access to transportation has always, always been central to the struggle for equality in the United States, and commute time remains the single strongest factor in the odds of escaping poverty. My work to improve Maryland's transit system started long before I ever ran for office or started the General Assembly's Transit Caucus, and as Maryland's comptroller, I'll continue that fight by providing greater oversight and accountability for MDOT spending, making sure our transportation system is meeting our goals of equity, opportunity, and resiliency. In other words, as comptroller, I'll be your advocate. I plan to be a 24, com 24 county comptroller, and this will be a 24 county campaign. The work of the comptroller's office already touches every person, every family, every community. We can be a state that doesn't leave any child or any community behind. In fact, it's the only way we'll ultimately reach our, our full potential. We are in a really dark and challenging moment right now, but we can use this challenge to imagine something better. And if we can imagine it with persistence and grit, we can make it happen. A post-pandemic Maryland must not look the same as a pre-pandemic Maryland. We can and must not just rebuild, but build a better Maryland. As your next comptroller, I'll work tirelessly to do just that. I know that we can meet this moment, Maryland. I hope I can earn your support, and I hope you'll join me by signing up at my website, brooklearman.com, and inviting me to meet you and your community in the coming year. While times are incredibly challenging right now, I believe we can use this moment and pivot to build a better Maryland for every family and community in the state. Be well, take care, and thank you for watching tonight. Please welcome Baltimore City Council Member Felicia Porter. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Felicia Porter. Um, I'm the I'm the newly elected uh, city councilwoman uh, representing Cherry Hill, Westport, Lakeland, and Curtis Bay. And these are all a part of Books, Books District. Um, these neighborhoods have needed uh, leadership for some time now and Brooke has been there for them. Brooke has helped secure funding for schools. She's helped start um, community development groups. She's helped build new playgrounds. And she's also even dished out mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving. I'm so, so proud to be supporting Brooke um, to be our next, our state's next comptroller. She is a champion uh, for our community. She's a champion for small businesses. She's a champion for healthcare, and she has always worked as a partner with local government. Her constituents love her. I love her. I think she's an amazing and dynamic public servant. And a few of them wanted to share some words, of, some words about her with you. Brooke has been our friend here in the 46th District, someone that we're proud to have represent us here in Annapolis. We can't wait for you guys to get to meet her as well. 
what I most appreciate about her is that she's someone who's deeply engaged in the neighborhood and she is raising her kids in the neighborhood. Brooke was instrumental in helping us attract public and private funding for a state-of-the-art library that's really the heart of the school. And she's just been a tireless advocate for us. Brooke Learman has been a champion for small businesses. No podemos esperar para que todos conozcan a Brooke como nosotros la conocemos. She's compassionate, endearing, supportive. She not only takes the time to listen to us, but she takes the time to understand the issue and then connect the dots. She just gets things done. She has her ear in the community and is always meeting the needs of the people that live in District 46. We know Brooke, we love Brooke, and we can't wait for you to meet her too. Please welcome Maryland State Delegate Maggie McIntosh. Hi, and welcome. I'm so excited that all of you have joined us this evening for my friend Brooke. This is a challenging year, and we need leaders ready to create a more equitable future. I know Brooke from my years working side by side with her on the Appropriations Committee. She's the right person to be our next comptroller in Maryland. She knows the operating budget. She knows the capital budget inside and out. And did you see her just a few minutes ago get excited about talking about our pension and uh, what she can do to help make sure that pension system is strong in Maryland. She also gets excited about everyday stuff, like how to help our small businesses grow. As comptroller, Brooke will be on uh, one of the three members of the Board of Public Works. Do you know how important that is? All state contracts go to the Board of Public Works for approval. And at times just like this, when the state revenues are shrinking, it is that board that decides where to make budget cuts. Will they cut education? Will they cut state worker pay? Those three people make critical decisions. You know what I know about Brooke? She will protect our values on the Board of Public Works. I tell you, the first time I talked to Brooke about her interest in running for office, we met at Jimmy's, a diner in Fells Point. We had a cup of coffee and an egg, over easy, with toast. I left that meeting lighter, like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I remember exactly how I felt. I felt like it's going to be okay. We have smart, determined women coming up through the ranks of leadership and they're gonna be great. We've never had a woman comptroller and Brooke is the one we need to break that glass ceiling. She's been a leader in the house and she'll be a fighter for our families and for small businesses as comptroller. Let me leave you with one final challenge. I work for Senator Barbara Mikulski. Both Brooke and I consider her a mentor. Senator Mikulski is the only woman to be elected statewide in her own right in Maryland. Can I repeat that? Senator Mikulski is the only woman ever elected statewide in her own right. We have no women in our congressional delegation or the top three elected positions in the state. Come on, we can do better than that, Marilyn. And Brooke is the leader who can break that glass ceiling. Let's get behind her now. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you to all the friends who joined us online tonight and who signed up to help host our kickoff events on Zoom around the state during the first week of January. That's right. We're gonna have a series of kickoff events covering every county in the state of Maryland the first week of January. And we hope that you will join us at those events. You can find one near you at my website, brooklearman.com. I also just wanna give a special thanks to my friends and colleagues in the General Assembly and local governments for the work they're doing and encourage you to follow our work on YouTube and use your voice. It matters. I'll end tonight with a moment of deep gratitude for all our essential workers, our bus drivers, 
our transit drivers, our grocery store workers, our healthcare workers, our childcare workers, and more. And a reminder to get out and support our neighbors' businesses, our small retailers, our restaurants this holiday season, as well as our nonprofits. Thank you all of you for sharing some of your time with us tonight. Let's take care of one another, wear a mask and be safe. Thank you for joining me tonight. I look forward to working with you to build a better Maryland. Good night. Thank you.